Do you feel like you're stuck or find yourself attracting the same type of relationships and negative experiences or just not manifesting what you want in life? Welcome to Heal Your Story. I'm your host, Heidi Dallaire. Here we discuss all things life, love, relationships, the relationship with yourself, and the stories we tell about ourselves and others. I help people get out of their busy heads and get back in touch with their heart space to learn self-love and help heal their story. I'm a heart space and relational coach, a holistic health practitioner, and author at HeidiDelaire.com and LoveWideOpen.com. Let's go hold some heart space together. Hi loves, I am coming to you from my home today. Today is Memorial Day and I am not in the office, so I don't have my normal microphone or the studio, so you may have sounds of motorcycles, sounds of traffic, sounds of the wind, uh, sounds of the dog, every other thing that could potentially happen at home. So today, uh, episode 156, saying yes to yourself. And where we're expanding on last week's self-empowerment episode. So today I'm, I'm diving into the transformative journey of saying yes to yourself and unlocking your true potential. Like we'll delve deeper into a, a crucial foundation for your personal growth and empowerment. So let's dive into episode 156, saying yes to yourself. There's seven steps I'm going to go through. And step number one is make your own decisions. Many people go through life thinking they have control over their decisions, but the truth is we often find ourselves swept away by the demands and expectations of others. This step is really about reclaiming your autonomy and taking charge of your own damn life. It starts by examining how you spend your precious minutes, hours, and days. Are you truly telling your time where to go, or are you constantly prioritizing the needs and desires of others before your own? So take a minute to reflect on your daily routine and commitments. Are there areas where you can make conscious choices that align with your values, your passions, and your goals? Making your own decisions requires a shift in your mindset. It means recognizing that your desires, dreams, and aspirations matter. It means giving yourself permission to put yourself first without guilt or hesitation. So start by making small decisions that honor your true self. Maybe that's setting aside time each day for a hobby you love or saying no commitments that drain your energy and don't align with your priorities. And as you make these choices, observe how your relationship with time and personal fulfillment begins to shift. You'll start to crave more of the ability to be your own kind of flow. I mean, to to live accordingly to your values and aspirations. Each decision you make in alignment with your authentic self, becomes a stepping stone on the path to your most abundant life. So remember, this process is not about being selfish or disregarding the needs of others. It's about finding the balance between self-care and the responsibilities we have towards our loved ones and communities. So when you prioritize yourself and make decisions that align with your truest desires, You become a beacon of inspiration for others to do the same. So embrace the power of choice and take ownership of your decisions. Your life is a canvas and it's up to you to paint it with the colors of your dreams. So by making your own decisions, you pave the way for a life that reflects your authentic self and allows you to soar to new heights of fulfillment. Okay, we're going to move into step number two. Quit making it hard. It's time to let go of the self-imposed barriers and obstacles that make achieving your dreams feel like an uphill battle. This is all about simplifying your approach and creating a mindset of ease and flow. So often, 
we unknowingly sabotage our own desires by completely overcomplicating things. We let stress, anxiety, and self-doubt creep into our daily lives that hinder our ability to show up fully for ourselves. But it, it doesn't actually have to be that way, you know? It's time to make a conscious choice to quit making it hard. Start by taking an honest look at how you spend your time each day. Are you constantly overwhelmed with tasks that don't align with your priorities or bring you joy? Question mark. Are you caught up in negative thought patterns and limiting beliefs that hold you back? Question mark. Recognize that you have the power to release the unnecessary burdens and create a simpler, more fulfilling path. Yeah, I know right now how many of you are saying, easier said than done. You know, it's my least favorite phrase on the freaking planet. Everything is easier said than done. Yep, I get it. But stop using it as an excuse. So ask yourself, what can I let go of? Identify the activities, commitments, and even relationships that no longer serve your growth and well-being. It might be saying no to additional responsibilities that drain your energy. Setting boundaries with people who constantly demand your time and attention or letting go of perfectionism and embracing the concept of, you know what, good enough. So simplifying your life is not about laziness or complacency. It's about streamlining your focus, directing your energy towards what truly matters. By doing so, you create space for the things that bring you joy, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose. As you embark on this journey of simplicity, pay attention to the language you use and the thoughts you cultivate. Work on replacing self-doubt with self-belief, negativity with positivity, and complexity with simplicity. Surround yourself with supportive people who uplift and inspire you to just keep moving forward in your life. Embrace the power of mindfulness and the present moment, present moment awareness. Be fully present in each task and experience rather than getting lost in worries about the past or anxieties about the future. Remember the present moment is where true transformation happens. The present is where true transformation happens because you bring yourself to now, which is the only place that actually really matters. Now, there are a lot of episodes about bring yourself to the present moment. There are articles on lovewideopen.com about bringing yourself to the present moment and also on HeidiGalair.com. So bringing yourself to the present moment is where transformation happens. So by quitting the habit of making shit hard, you open yourself up to new possibilities and opportunities. You allow your authentic self to shine through, unencumbered by unnecessary complexities. You create a pathway of ease and flow where you show up for your best self and make meaningful progress towards your goals. So, it's time to release the struggle and embrace the simplicity of your journey. Let go of what does not serve you. Cultivate a mindset of ease. And watch as your life starts to unfold with greater clarity and fulfillment. So we're moving on to step three now. Learn to ask for help and accept help. This is actually like step 3.1, step 3.2. So we often underestimate the power of seeking support and leaning on others. Step three is all about recognizing that we don't have to navigate our journey alone. It's time to embrace the strength and growth that comes from reaching out and accepting assistance. Asking for help can be an extremely vulnerable and fearful act, especially if we've been conditioned to believe that we should be self-reliant in all aspects of our lives. Well, that's a load of crap because I have asked for help so many times in life and it's actually allowed me to get to the next level. So the truth is we all need support at various times. 
by seeking help, we not only lighten our load, but but we also create opportunities for deeper connections and collaborations. How can you begin to ask for help and accept help? Simply starts with acknowledging that it's okay to reach out. You don't have to bear the weight of the world on your shoulders. You can allow someone else to witness you, and man, there's a power in that. Recognize that seeking assistance is a sign of strength, not weakness. Identify your areas of life where you could benefit from support. It could be in your personal relationships, your professional endeavors, or even your self-care practices. Reflect on the tasks, responsibilities, or challenges that feel overwhelming or drain your energy. These are the areas where asking for help can make a huge difference in your life. So next, consider who you can turn to for support. This could be a friend, a family member, a mentor, a professional, coach, somebody, anyone. Reach out to these individuals and express your needs and intentions. But you have to be clear and specific in what you need, or else you're going to get a whole lot of unsolicited advice. It's essential to understand that asking for help is not a one-way street. It's actually a reciprocal process. Just as you ask for support, be open and willing to offer assistance to others when they need it. So many of my clients have told me that when and after we've had a coaching session and something that I've taught them that's really sort of hit them in a way that has expanded their growth, that they then share with someone else, which then helps expand that person's growth. It's a reciprocal process. Work at creating, a, 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 a let's say it's a, a spirit of mutual support and collaboration. This is a fostering of a community, actually, where everyone can thrive. So let's talk about the second part of step three, which is accepting help. It's one thing to ask for it, but can you actually accept it? Many of us struggle with receiving help graciously. We might feel guilty, unworthy, or even indebted to others who help us. So it's time to let go of these self-limiting beliefs and embrace the beauty of receiving. Accepting help allows others to contribute their unique skills, knowledge, and perspectives to your journey. It's an opportunity for growth and expansion, both for yourself and the person offering assistance. Practice gratitude for the support that is offered to you and that you will now open up to to receiving. Express your appreciation and acknowledge the value that others bring to your life. And as you embrace this, you'll discover that asking for and accepting help actually enriches your life in countless ways. It enhances your personal development, it strengthens your relationships, and it propels you forward on your journey towards self-empowerment. So step four, invest in yourself. Invest in yourself is an act of self-love, self-care. It's about recognizing your inherent worth and taking deliberate actions to nurture your growth, expand your horizons, and awaken your true potential. So how can you invest in yourself? It begins by exploring your passions, your interests, and your curiosities. What actually brings you joy? What ignites your enthusiasm? If you can identify these areas of your life, that you want to explore further and that align with your authentic self, wow, you open up so many doors. So one powerful way to invest in yourself is through continuous learning and personal development. If you're not like working on growth, you're stagnant and you're stuck. So embrace a mindset of lifelong learner, right? And and seek opportunities to expand your knowledge, your skills, and your perspectives. Because if you're, if you're again, if you're not doing that, you're you're sitting like a, a a horse with blinders on. All you can see is just a little tiny tunnel. You can't see anything else. But if you oh, if you take those blinders off, you're like, oh, well, look at this world. 
there's all these things I could learn. Don't don't and and, and don't let like the the uh, these beliefs that may or may not be true of what you think hold you back because you're really trying to get to your authentic self. So also investing in yourself means taking care of your physical and mental well-being, prioritizing self-care practices that nourish your body, your mind, and your soul. This could include regular exercise, mindful or meditation practices, journaling, engaging activities that bring you peace and joy, a membership that allows you to learn more about self-empowerment. Now, another aspect of self-investment is, is really cultivating very healthy relationships and connections. Seek out mentors, coaches, like-minded individuals who can actually really guide you on a journey to provide you these valuable insights and growth. Now, financial investment is another avenue to consider. Okay, I know this one's going to make some people feel a little prickly, but that's okay. Assess your financial situation and explore opportunities for growth and stability. Are you staying in the easier said than done mindset, or are you seeking all opportunities that are around you? That's all I'm going to say about it. So lastly, celebrate your progress and milestones along the way. Acknowledge and appreciate the steps you've taken to invest in yourself. Celebrate your achievements, no matter how small they may seem, and use them as fuel to propel yourself forward. All right, we're moving straight into step five. Before we do so, we're going to take a quick sponsor break. This episode is brought to you by the Weather Channel app. Did you know the app can help you forecast more than just the weather? With allergy tracking and flu risk mapping. So you know when to stay inside and load up on podcast, As well as air quality and UV indexing. So you know when to get outside, load up on sunscreen and podcast. Forecast more of what you love with the Weather Channel app. So step number five, have a non-negotiable. This step is all about prioritizing your own well-being and creating a consistent practice of self-care and self-love. A non-negotiable is something that you commit to doing for yourself on a regular basis. It's an essential part of your routine that you refuse to compromise on. Regardless of other commitments and obligations, this practice becomes a sacred time dedicated solely to nurturing your own needs and desires. Non-negotiable, meditation in the morning, or quiet time in the morning where there are no other distractions, zero. I don't let them in. I carve out the time, make space for myself. This is a non-negotiable for myself because it sets me up for a much better day. So how do you establish a non-negotiable? You have to do this by, you, you, well, you start by considering activities or experiences that bring you joy, peace, or a sense of rejuvenation. It could be a weekly yoga class, a monthly self-care day, a daily meditation practice, or any other activity that helps you reconnect with yourself. Now, the key is to choose something that actually truly resonates with you and aligns with your values and desires. It should be an activity that allows you to recharge, calibrate, and reconnect with your inner self. Remember, this is your personal treat. It's a gift to yourself for simply being you. Now, it's worth mentioning that having a non-negotiable also empowers you to set boundaries and prioritize your needs. It's an opportunity to say no to activities or requests that do not align with your personal well-being. Remember, taking care of yourself, it's not selfish. It's necessary for your own overall happiness and fulfillment. So I really encourage you to take a moment to reflect on what activity or practice you can turn into your non-negotiable. Sit quietly with yourself, listen to your inner voice, and choose something that really truly resonates with you. Commit to it, honor it, and let it become a powerful anchor for self-care and self-love in your life. All right, we're moving right along. We are on step number six of saying yes to yourself 
just set a goal, which we talked about last week. Now, this step is all about harnessing the power of goal setting to unlock your potential and propel you towards living a more abundant life. I'm not going to get deep into this this week because we did talk about it last week, but goals provide us with a sense of direction, purpose, motivation. They give us something to strive for and help us channel our energy and our efforts towards meaningful accomplishments. When we set and then achieve goals, we experience a sense of fulfillment and progress, which then fuels our self-confidence and propels us forward. Remember, setting a goal is not just about the end result. It's about the journey. So you're going to have to embrace the challenges, embrace the setbacks, and embrace the lessons along the way. They're all part of your growth and development. So stay focused, stay committed, be open to adapting your approach as needed. Take a moment to reflect on what goal you want to set for yourself. Put it in your mind's eye, visualize it, break it down into actionable steps, things that actually you can do, and then commit to taking consistent action. And remember to celebrate your wins along the way. Embrace the journey of growth and transformation. Okay, we're bringing this home. Step number seven, show up for yourself. If you can show up for yourself, so many people don't show up for themselves. Show up for yourself. This step is a powerful reminder that you, you are in charge of your life. No one else, no other religion, no other deity. You are in charge of your life. And that true change begins when you prioritize your own well-being and fulfillment. No, that was a really strong statement I just made. Do you get it? You. You are the one who has to take action on things. You can't just sit around with hope. You actually have to take action. You have to show up for yourself. You have to show up for change. You have to choose something better for yourself. Now, this may sound simple or complicated. But showing up for yourself goes way beyond just your physical presence. It means making a really conscious choice to honor your needs, your desires, and your dreams. So often we find ourselves putting others first, going above and beyond for our loved ones and colleagues and friends. And in this process, we neglect our own self-care and aspirations. And there's a downside to that. I am not saying do not help other people. That is not what I am saying. I am all about it. And yes, I do. What I'm saying is, is that if you put other people's needs before your own, you actually really can't help them because you're depleting yourself. And you're not staying in alignment with yourself. And later down the road, you're going to feel some resentment. You're going to be like, no, no, I won't. Yes, you will. Trust me. Yes, you will. So take a moment to reflect on the ways you put yourself last in the past. Perhaps you've dedicated time and energy to preparing meals for everyone else while neglecting to nourish yourself. It's time to break this pattern and commit to making a change. Make a commitment to show up for yourself. It means setting healthy boundaries, carving out dedicated time and space for self-care. Listen, I had somebody comment on a social media post of mine today. I made the statement of like, you know, taking better care of yourself and and putting yourself in the space of positive people. And their comment was, oh, victimhood of tell that to me when I haven't been in 40 years of negativity. And my immediate thought was, take your blinders off on that statement for a moment. You've chosen to stay in 40 years of negativity. What can you do? What small changes can you make? How do you research how to get out? Look into your finances. There are opportunities for you to make change. Doesn't mean it's all going to happen tomorrow, but you can start to shift your boat in a different direction if you want to. And that takes a lot of courage and commitment. And I'm here for you if you want to do that. 
So again, start by identifying areas in your life where you've been ne neglecting yourself. Are there habits, behaviors that drain your energy or hinder your growth? Are there relationships or commitments that no longer serve your highest good? It's time to shed these old patterns and make room for your own fulfillment. Now remember, showing up for yourself is not a selfish act. In fact, it's quite the opposite. When you prioritize your own well-being and happiness, you become better equipped to serve others authentically and with a renewed sense of purpose. I'm getting a little emotional on this one. By showing up for yourself, you become a beacon of inspiration for others. Your commitment to personal growth and self-care. This becomes an invitation for others around you to do the same. So by honoring your own needs and desires, you give others permission to do the same. That creates a ripple effect of positive change. So remember, this journey is ongoing. And every day is an opportunity for growth and transformation. So embrace the power within you and be inspired to take charge of your life. Until next time, keep saying yes to yourself and watch your world expand with infinite possibilities. And if you want help with it all, book a Heal Your Story strategy session with me to discover how to eradicate your blocks and unlock your potential. The link will be in the show notes. You can also join the Heal Your Story Facebook community where we discuss these podcast episodes further. The link is also in the show notes. I'm sending you a ton of love and all I'm saying is just make one small step in a different direction and start saying yes to yourself. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another episode of Heal Your Story. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find me, my coaching services, my book, or book a Heal Your Story strategy session at HeidiDelaire.com. For other self-development articles, go to LoveWideOpen.com. And you can also follow me at Heidi Dallaire or Love Wide Open on all social media channels. Thanks so much. Sending lots of love.